Welcome to Roll for Crit. This is our monthly board game news roundup for the month of July 2021. If you've been following along with our channel, you know that we recently launched a podcast, a weekly audio podcast, where you can hear news and discussion with guests every single week. What we're going to start doing now, or at least we're experimenting and we're going to try this, is at the end of each month, we are also going to have a little bit of a recap on our YouTube channel that you're watching right now, where we look back at all the biggest stories from the past month and feed them to you in case you didn't get a chance to hear about him or just as a reminder. And we will get right into it with the first story now. Awards are always exciting, and we know now the winners for both the Dice Tower Awards as well as the Spiel des Jahres for 2021. Starting with Spiel, the winner of the Spiel Award is going to the deductive game Micro Macro Crime City. And for the Kenner Spiel, it's going to the cooperative game Paleo. There is the third award, the Kinderspiel, the Kids Game One. That was announced a little bit earlier, going to the Dragon King Domino game, Drag Domino. Now, as terms for the Dice Tower Awards, there are more than just three for all different things, whether it's art or cooperative game, but the obvious winners were The Crew as well as Lost Ruins of Arnak. Both games taking multiple awards home, with The Crew being the one to take home Best Game of the Year. Lost Ruins of Arnak was also nominated uh, for the Kenner Spiel, but but lost out on that one. So I guess maybe it's a little bit of its revenge as for mm -hmm. the, the Dice Tower Awards. Uh, but all these are games that are worth playing, at least worth trying out, at least the ones I've experienced. And the ones I haven't, like Micro Macro Crime City, which is this weird Where's Waldo detective game. I'm very curious to get my hands on it if and when it's available and if it doesn't sell out within like five minutes. In addition, uh, if people are wondering, the crew wasn't slided in the spiel because it was able to go through that back during 2020. Right. Timelines are a thing for different countries around the world. <laughs> Next, we're going to highlight two big new game announcements in two popular board game franchises that already exist, starting with Machi Koro 2 from Pandasaurus Games, the sequel, apparently, to the original Machi Koro, wherein you are building a city, taking various cards that form different establishments in your town, rolling dice to see which ones activate. In Machi Koro 2, they're going to give you a little more control to start as there's sort of a drafting section where you're going to have some cards you'll be able to build before the game officially begins. And there's also, of course, going to be all new establishments for you to have, so totally different from the old game, and a little bit of a change to the way the lineup works. So it'll be a little bit more variety, a little bit more a little different from the original Machi Koro that you're used to. And then if you're a fan of the Pandemic series or World of Warcraft, then maybe you want to check out World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, coming from Z-Man Games, which is based on the Pandemic system, but this one has some changes to it. You're still working together. Now you're trying to combat the scourge of the Lich King. You're going to have unique characters with their own special abilities that you can use, and there's a new mechanic known as quests. So as a group, you'll need to travel to certain places, perhaps defeat enemies, uh, roll dice, use certain cards to take those quests on before it's too late. Both of these major announcements and very popular game series, though I do want to point out what would be really cool if we were World of Warcraft, it was actually used for pandemic study research when someone accidentally brought a debuff out of a raid and it starts spreading along a server. And I sort of wish they did that, but more people know the Lich King. <laughs> well, maybe maybe this, uh, this new version will lead to even more studies about pandemic, whether they be real or in a board game. And uh, Machi Koro 2 sounds interesting. I think there's some interesting changes there. I'll be curious to see if that replaces the original game for anybody or if it lives alongside it. Uh, that one is scheduled for release in October, and you can pre-order it right now, while uh, Wrath of the Lich King is going to be later on in 2021. As the board game hobby grows and more people join the tabletop world, we're going to have to take a look at maybe some of our older games and see how they may be a bit problematic. And in The Atlantic, they recently made an article talking about one of the bigger issues in board games in terms of a theme, and that's colonialism. Many games use this as more of a way to just explain some mechanics and don't really try to go too much into that. But because of that, they tend to gloss over some of the more historical problems that have come from this, such as slavery and violence and other things. 
Now, many game designers who have made these games have talked about how they wish to either change them by either making some small adjustments or even expansions where you play and try to fight off the colonialism, or in the case of one of the most biggest games around, Puerto Rico, a whole new version that should take instead of being the colonization, but maybe a newer era that tries to bring everyone to the table and not ignore or at the very least pretend that the negative aspects of history did not happen. It's worth reading this article if you get the chance. It's a discussion that has been around in the board game community for a little while that I think is worth having, especially with uh, other people who have more of a vested interest in it than we do. Uh, but I'm, I'm very curious to see now what the new Puerto Rico is going to be like. Uh, there, you know, also uh, the game Mombasa was stated to be having a new version that's going to change some of those thematic elements. Uh, so hopefully, going forward, we don't we don't have to make new versions of games. They'll just get it right the first time if, if we're lucky. If we keep trying. Some legal issues in the role-playing world. Of course, if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with TSR, the company that originally published Dungeons and Dragons back in the day. They had since gone out of business, but the trademark had lapsed and the name had been picked up by not one, but two different companies. And through some strange legal loopholes, both existed at the same time under the name TSR Games, both publishing role-playing content. One of those two companies uh, was owned owned by Ernie Gygax Jr., relative of Dungeons & Dragons' original creator. And there was some controversy when he made some problematic statements, some transphobic statements online. Since then, uh, the company has apologized. Some of those apologies have been critiqued and deleted. There's been a lot of damage control that's been going on. But now we know that both companies have, in fact, changed their name. Uh, the one run by Ernie Gygax is going to be called Wonderfilled Games, while the other one is now under the name Soul. Solarian Games. So two separate role-playing companies, uh, which now really have nothing to do with each other, and there is no longer a TSR Games in existence. I was expecting one of them would change their name because even outside of the thing that brought this up with the problematic statements, just two companies having the same name and having issues like, identifying their own brand, and I can imagine someone give up, but I'm surprised both pretty much are just like, we're just both going to go our own ways. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I mean, I, I think they both just probably independently, I wonder if one of them was like, darn it, we could have kept our name. I didn't know they were going to change it too. Uh, but I think it's for the best. I mean, they're different companies. They, it seems like they're doing different things. And I think we said this in our podcast too, but I would just love to see an HBO documentary miniseries someday because this is such a, it's a very strange little story and uh, the legal issues are kind of fascinating. <laughs> A while back, Gen Con put out a survey for people to fill, asking whether they are vaccinated, what their conditions are, if they've gotten COVID before, in order to sort of suss out what they should do for this year's Gen Con. They've gotten the results back and they announced what they're going to do. According to the survey, 87% of people had been vaccinated by the time they filled out that survey, with a few more equaling to about 90% of the people being either vaccinated or going to get it by the time Gen Con rolls around. Because of this, they've announced that their new mandate such that if you are vaccinated, you can go to a booth in order to get a band to not wear a mask. However, they will strongly suggest that you still wear a mask indoors. They're of course going to reduce the cap of number of people they allow to 60%, but they won't be doing timed entry. So like previous Gen Cons, you can go to whatever door you want to go in order to enter the convention hall. For me, it's at least a little encouraging that, you know, Gen Con is addressing these issues or talking about telling everyone to please wear masks. And, you know, they're doing all, like you said, the less people attending, sanitization, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Essen also has announced their own uh, precautions that they're taking, which go even further uh, than Gen Con. They're, they're, I think, requiring everyone to be vaccinated to attend, uh, which is good, I would say, <laughs> is, is, is better and good. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. It's Gen Con this year is in September. We're going to be there, and it will be interesting to see exactly how different it feels feels uh, with, uh, you know, much fewer people and all these things in place and how well people decide to do or not do what Gen Con is asking of them, how well people are complying mm -hmm. with all these regulations. Of course, as you said, it, that takes place in September and this announcement was made early July. So of course, we're going to see more people who may get vaccinated or more 
more news on COVID, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that when September actually rolls around. Now we'll cover the biggest new releases in the board game world from the month of July. Starting with Alder Quest, which is a head-to-head -head game where you have an army of little woodland critters and you're trying to control the area, collect acorns, and defeat your opponents. Then there is Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig with a brand new expansion, Secrets and Soirees. This is the castle building game where you're using tiles from both your neighbors to your left and right to build different castles together while still competing. This new expansion has a solo mode plus a mode that allows you to have more players and of course, brand new types of tiles that you can add to your castle that you're building. Then from Pandasaurus, there's a new game called Brew, another one that involves woodland critters. This time there is pandemonium in the forest. It's up to you to bring balance to the seasons, harmony to nature, again, using worker placement to brew your own potions for various purposes. There's also a game called Dice Miner. This is a dice drafting game where you're going to be taking these dice and rolling them, trying to collect loot and uh, get more points than your opponents while also avoiding horrible attacks from things like, say, dragons. And there's an interesting mechanic with a mountain where the dice are literally cascading down it, and that will determine which dice are available for you to take on your turn. There's another very unique game called Dive coming from Sit Down Games, which uses transparent cards. You will be looking down into these, they will represent the ocean, and you're trying to determine which ones are safe, which ones maybe have sharks or dolphins or sea turtles. Maybe some will help you, some will hurt you. Uh, and it's gonna be tricky because it's hard to tell where they overlap exactly. Duel of Wands is also out. This one is based on the Kids on Brooms RPG. And in this one, you're both kid wizards, throwing cards back and forth, different spells, and upgrading those spells. It's a fast-paced two-player battle game. Magic the Gathering's newest set is out, and this is now the official crossover with Dungeon Dragons titled Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. In this new set, it has cards based on Dungeons & Dragons, not just with characters such as Tiamat, but also mechanics, such as a dungeon delving mechanic, which will have you go through very famous dungeons, or cards will ask you to roll a 20-sided die. Marvel Champions, of course, has another pack, and this time Venom comes in. This anti-hero not only brings all his symbiotic powers, not only to help you defeat the main villain, but also, it's your biggest weakness. You will have to fight off the symbiote in order to keep control and hopefully be able to master Venom in the symbiote in order to take down the big bad. Speaking of big bad, Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria has you take on the big bads instead of playing the heroes in the world of Valeria. You're gonna to try to gather up troops and prove you're the biggest bad compared to all the other villains out there. Then, So Clover is a word game in which players will take turns being the, the head of their team using cards with words on each side of the four sides of a card and give a hint that applies to all of one side. Then players are going to have to decide using this little clover board and the keywords that they're leader has in order to try to guess the right orientations of the cards. It's summertime, which means this next game is quite appropriate for its DJ Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith summertime. Based on the song, in this game, you have to prove to those two that you are cool enough to hang out using different cards and hopefully prove that you're not the square that, that you may actually be like me. Then. We've got Summoner Wars. This is actually a new version. It is the second edition from Plat Hat Games. This is a two-player head-to-head game, sort of combating with different cards and customizing little expanding sets. You can take a look at it, and they have sort of a subscription service to get back not only all the old cards that were in the first edition, but I'm sure newer groups to come along. We're gonna end with Uka Toa from Darrening Press. You may recognize these names because they're from Critical Role. Darrington Press is their board game line, and this is the first game to come out. In this game, you play as sailors on a sinking ship, and your goal is for you and or your team to be the last one standing, making sure you don't anger the sea god, Ukatoa. A few of these games we have had the chance to play and share our thoughts with you already elsewhere on our channel or our podcast, perhaps. Some of them we will be playing uh, in the weeks to come, and I'm excited for. I mean, the Magic D&D crossover is definitely, that's like a big event for the for the tabletop world at large because it's, <laughs> I guess so, yeah. you know, I mean, 
I mean, they're both owned by Wizards of the Coast, and they also <laughs> both happen to be the biggest tabletop properties, right? And that exists. So, yeah. I mean, pretty much. And as someone who plays it, I will say I'm not crazy about the delving into the dungeon mechanic, but the dice rolling, I think, is really fun. And I will say there are a lot of great dragons in it. So they definitely got the dragon part right. <laughs> there you go. That's half the battle. <laughs> Maybe the next set uh, will have dungeons done better or something mm -hmm. like that. And, uh, yeah, overall, the month, there's, you know, uh, like a lot of months in the world, there have been ups and downs, some stories mm -hmm. uh, kind of positive, some negative, some in the middle, some of just, like, uncertainty, like, right. you know, for health reasons or legal reasons. Yeah, I mean, I think for the months to come, no matter what, there'll always be news about the pandemic, be it the game or the real life one. <laughs> we got both in this episode, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, we, there's a lot to take in these mm -hmm. days. Thanks for watching this news roundup. If you want to hear us talk about all these stories and more really in depth, then you should subscribe to our podcast, which you can find on all available platforms. Uh, and we would appreciate it. Or if you're just watching this right now and you have thoughts or opinions on anything we discussed, that's what the comment section is for. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and leave a comment right down below. We will read it and we will respond. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit. Hey, why don't you like this video for us to help us out or even subscribe to the channel or even support us on Patreon, where for just a few bucks a month, you can get some really cool extra content. We also do live streams on our Twitch channel and a separate YouTube channel. You can find links to that in the description. You definitely want to catch us playing board games and video games over there.